replacement goodies have arrived and it's a metal version of the original plastic one so I'm going to get that fitted uh, now I'm running out of daylight hours so I won't show you the fitting because it's boring and you've seen it all before the new part also comes with um, new metal pieces that replace the old one and the plastic sleeve the new choke thermostat is fitted um, and the new hose is fitted as well uh, which should hopefully give us a bit more service than the old one that was on there and the carburetor is retorked down again um, I will have to top up the coolant slightly because we have lost some um, but uh, that's no big deal I'll just top it up with distilled water right I'm going to have a look at the uh, intermediary shaft seal um, daylight hours are beginning to go so I'm not sure whether I'm going to get it finished tonight or not we're going to start by taking those um, what look like 12mm bolts out and uh, also I've got to remove the um, Woodruff key that is in there. So this is what we've come in to replace. Um, we think this actual seal's um, broken on the o-ring or leaking and we've got the new seal to replace there so I'm going to go indoors and do that. New seal and o-ring kit. That's the new seal fitted and the new o-ring as well. Now I'm going to get this back on the car quickly because daylight hours are really fading now. Okay new seal fitted back into the um, carrier um, that again put a bit of a fight getting it on there but it's on there now uh, I have also noticed a bit of surface rusting on the end of these um, two shafts uh, I've coated them in oil now but it didn't but it didn't take long for them to uh, start to surface rust so bear that in mind if you ever take these things apart it's a week later and the parts have not arrived yet although I have had a confirmation email to say that they are arriving at 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon. So I'm going to start by uh, getting ready for those parts to arrive. I don't think I'm going to get it done today as I'd hoped I would. Um, I have drained the oil out of the sump. I intend to take the sump off as I've got a new gasket coming for it. Should make fitting the new gasket on the crank seal plate a lot easier um, because it means I can trim it flush with the bottom of the block and thus eliminating any potential oil leaks around an over long or over short gasket. Um, it's a bit more of a, a bit more of a hassle but it gives me a chance to clean the sump out and change that gasket. Okay, let's see if we can get this to... Hope it would pop a bit easier than that. There we go, got a bit of movement there. Let's see if two hands will do it. It's very difficult with you in the way that. Come on. Okay. Let's work this proper. Side's coming off. It's on light locating pins, which I think is what's holding us up. <laughs> Come on, there we go. That's that side. I think we're off. <laughs> there we go. And there we have the plate with the seal and you can clearly see that the gasket is blown I don't know if you can see you can clearly see where the gasket was blown out and torn around this bolt hole and I think that's where the majority of the oil was spraying out that's the sump dropped fairly painless job we now have access to the inside of the engine not that we need to do anything there but uh, it's interesting to see it nonetheless so I'm going to clean the sump out and uh, get it ready for the new gasket and um, putting back on. I'll try to save the gasket just in case the replacement 
doesn't work or doesn't fit. Worst case, we can always clean it up. I don't like reusing gaskets, but in an emergency. There are some lumps of sealant or something, hard crusty bits, floating around at the bottom of the engine. It's probably a good job we're cleaning this out. Just in the nick of time, my parcel has arrived. I'm going to see what's inside. Hopefully it's everything we need. Good, just what we needed. New bolt, new gasket, a new seal, and new sump gasket. Interestingly, the new seal has like a metal base to it, whereas the old one's just plastic. That's the new gasket pushed into place. I've oiled it lightly. Worried about this sharp lip, I'll just have to be careful on that. That's on. Now to bolt it down. Okay, these get tightened, the small ones to 20 newton meters and the large one to 10 newton meters. A bit awkward to get at these. Newton meters feels tight. Oh, I was getting nervous. I'm going to call cool that. That's tight enough. Okay, I've gone backwards and checked. They're both at at least 15 Newton meters. I just get nervous with small M6s getting high, uh, high torque values, and I don't, I don't 100 trust cheap torque wrenches. So I'm leaving it. I'm letting sleeping dogs lie on that one. And this one is 10 newton meters apparently. That's 10 newton meters. The next job, and the main reason I took the sump off, is so that I can trim the protrusions which fall below this line um, to give us a nice flush finish. Um, I have read somewhere that they can cause um, oil leaks if you don't do this. That's the first one trimmed off. It's hanging on there. Come on. And the second one up this end, which is a bit more awkward to get to. Can't actually see. Try and get a better angle. Yep. This one might already be. Oh, there's a, a bracket right in my way. that one trimmed like I say it's just so that the gasket the sump gasket fits flush against it okay next job sump gasket the one that came off was more of a hard gasket whereas this one is a rubber gasket. I did pay more for this so I'm just hoping that it's an improvement on the original, not that the original was leaking. Okay. 
How good the bolt holes line up. They seem to line up okay. Now I'm not going to be able to show you fitting this because it's a bit of a fiddle under there. That's the sump back on. Um, I've taught it up to 15 Newton meters. Again, I'm being a bit judicious. Um, it's supposed to be 20 Newton meters, but uh, this is a rubber gasket and um, I'll, I'll see how it fares. If it starts leaking, then we'll change it. Um, if it starts leaking, then we'll torque it up a bit higher. Um, I had a bit of a struggle getting this back on. Unbeknown to me, this bracket here was stopping the sump pan from coming all the way over and I really, really struggled. Let me get my torch. I really struggled uh, to start that, that nut there that's being flashed on. That was a bugger. I just could not get it done. There was much swearing. And then I realized that this bracket actually was interfering slightly with the sump pan. Once I loosened that, the bloody thing went straight in. So that was probably a good 30 minutes of my time wasted swearing. So anyway, sump's back on and the plate and new seal's back on. And you can just see the green gasket poking out the side there. So hopefully once that's all torqued up, once the cam belt's on, um, that should be oil tight. Fingers crossed. Then hopefully we can finally get it through an MOT. I uh, reused the oil that I just put in because it was brand new 26 pound oil. Um, I ran it through a paint strainer um, before it went into the engine and I'm glad I did because it definitely picked up some fluff and bits and bobs that have been lurking in the sump. Excuse me. You can see them down the bottom there. So I would definitely use the strainer method again. And a brand new stretch bolt. I'm just going to loosely nip that up for the time being. Right. The cam belt is back in and timed and tensioned. Uh, I need now to uh, torque up the crankshaft bolt at the bottom there. I need to torque up the crankshaft bolt. I need to get up to some ridiculously high torque. Uh, I'm doing a reverse rope trick, so I've gone the other way on the crankshaft and I'm going to bring it up to compress the rope and that should hold our crank still while we torque up the nut, hopefully. It worked on the way off so it should work on the way up. All right, let's try and talk this to 200 newton meters. That gasket is doing its job, which is good because it was a lot of work. 